Hopefully I don't look like a fucking doofus, you know, hopefully. We all know that Facebook ads haven't been the easiest over the past year or so, but with these tips in this video that I'm going to lay out for you, you should have an advantage when competing against other advertisers in the market. I'm not gonna sugarcoat the video, we're gonna jump straight into the facts and the data. So we're gonna start out with some of the constants that you should have active in your ad account at all times. Some of these are gonna be settings that you manually set, and some of these are going to be bits and pieces of information that you'll need in the back of your head when deciding what ad to upload for Facebook or Instagram. Number one is going to be using campaign budget optimization over ad set budget optimization or CBO versus ABO. I know this is a hotly debated topic in the community, but over the past couple of years, Facebook has put a ton of effort, resources, and time into developing their algorithm. CBO is way better than ABO for getting consistent results with medium to high budgets. Now, if you do have a lower budget, maybe you want to experiment with limiting that on the ad ad set budget optimization level, but for anybody spending over $100 a day, I would highly suggest that you use CBO over ABO and use those algorithmic, ah, algorithmic, algorithmic, algorithmic benefits. Now to the bid strategies. Most of the time you're gonna be using lowest cost, but if you have a decent budget and the, the big point here, if you have data backed up on your pixel or conversion API, then I would suggest using cost caps as your bid strategy, put at the target cost per acquisition or customer lifetime value. So if you know that you can spend $50 to acquire a customer without losing money, then set your cost cap at $50 and Facebook will only try and get conversions at or below that level, which is really helpful, especially again, when you're spending a lot more money on Facebook. If you're just starting out, lowest cost is the way to go to build that data on the pixel and conversion API. Now the next one is really important, always optimize for conversions purchase. Never optimize for add to cart, initiate checkout, view content. I don't care what the Facebook marketers call you saying you need to optimize for purchase because that's just going to season your pixel and season your data to really optimize for those high end potential customers. Next, we want to make sure that we're using UTM parameters inside of the ad settings at all times. And this is going to allow us to send data over to third party data tracking software like Google Analytics and Triple Whale. And this can come in handy when we're trying to figure out what percentage of data loss we're seeing in the Facebook ad account, as in how many purchases or how many add to carts or how many clicks to a website are not showing within the standard reporting. We use something like Google Analytics to cross reference the data and the way that we do that is by setting up UTM parameters within the ad setting. We also want to make sure that we're continuously testing our landing page or the site that someone gets to or views when they click our ad from Facebook. We want to constantly be testing new things to try and boost the average order value and conversion rates of our landing page because even a 0.5% boost in our average order value or conversion rate can mean a world of difference when we're competing in the open marketplace against other advertisers in the Facebook auction. That means that we can spend that little bit of extra money to acquire a customer and bid out other competitors. Okay, so a few more constants before we move on. We want to be using the seven day click, one day view attribution window to capture as much data as possible. And this becomes more important as your ticket price of your item goes higher and higher. Essentially, if you're selling anything over $100, this is a absolute must have because those kind of products are going to take someone a little bit more time, effort, and more tension to release before they end up purchasing just because of the nature of the higher ticket product. The longer your purchase window, the higher your attribution should be. Now, if you do have a higher budget and you are using a impulse purchase as the product to promote on Facebook, then you can experiment with one day click attribution because that can be really useful for lower ticket products and higher budgets. But for the majority of you listening out there, seven day click one day view is going to be where you want to keep it. Now, for those of you out there that have a large product catalog, maybe you're selling apparel or you're starting a department store for whatever reason, I don't know, that just came to my mind. You want to be promoting the SKUs or the specific products on your site that have a high 60 to 90 day customer lifetime value. Essentially, trying to sell the products that when a customer purchases those products, they spend more money with your business compared 
compared to others within that 60 or 90 day window. Some other things to look at in this equation are your gross margins. So try and pick products that have good margins that make sense. And then also products that have high volume sold. We want to be promoting products that our customers actually want to purchase. Second to last, we always want to make sure that we're using AEM or aggregated events measurement within our reporting. So essentially we take purchases times our average order value within the same time frame, and then add that data to our Facebook ads manager data to get the most holistic in-platform view of what's actually going on in our ad account. And if you want to learn a little bit more extensively about aggregated events measurement, as well as other paid social terms, terminologies, strategies and ways to succeed in the Facebook auction, you should definitely consider joining the Roundtable Marketing Community. We have a ton of content in there aimed at making you a better paid social marketer on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and with a heavy emphasis on the landing page and business logistics. If you're interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description down below. We have a mobile app and a general chat to chat with everybody else doing the same thing and learning the same way that you are. Would highly recommend, let's move on. Now the last constant is going to be our placements. We always want to leave that on automatic. We don't want to single out our ads for feed only or story only. Yes, it can work, but you're missing out on potential sales and potential conversions if you don't have automatic placements on because Facebook ultimately is just going to know where the highest potential converting user is on their platform at any given time. So don't limit Facebook turn on automatic placements and leave it at that. Moving on to our two mandatory campaigns, and these are campaigns that should be in every single ad account if you're optimizing for conversions purchase. The first one being top of funnel or prospecting. Within prospecting, we wanna have a total of four to eight ad sets, and within those ad sets, we want to have at least four unique ads being split test against each other. Always make sure that if you have the ability to do so, test multiple ads at the same time just because you never know which variation could perform better and Facebook will tell you that if you upload enough ads. Now for the audiences in prospecting, broad is the number one and most important one, essentially no restrictions on the audience by age, demographic, gender, and interest groups. And then we actually have interest groups as another top of funnel or prospecting audience. We have lookalikes, which is, well, lookalike audience. Lastly, for the prospecting or top of funnel audiences, we have whitelisting. And this is essentially where we have someone else's, be it an influencer or a professional page on Facebook or Instagram that has a ton of followers within our niche. Niche? Jeez, niche. Uh, they have a ton of followers within our niche. What we'll do is we'll get access to run ads from their page and with specific creative, we'll target their user demographic, build lookalikes off of their user demographic as well. And that's kind of separate in terms of the audiences for top of funnel compared to broad interest and lookalikes. For exclusions on top of funnel, this is essentially where we're saying we don't want to target these people on any of our ads in this funnel layer. We're gonna have 30 day site visitors, purchasers, lifetime email and SMS buyers. These people should not see our ads because we want to segment out top of funnel and bottom of funnel. Speaking of bottom of funnel or remarketing, we want to have between two and four ad sets, each remarketing to a different position within our customer journey. Again, we want to have at least four ads in each ad set, split testing against each other, copying over post IDs. Some audience examples would be add to cart, initiate checkout, view content, all site visitors is another really important one. And then also social engagers or the people who have engaged with your Instagram and Facebook account within the past 365 days, but haven't purchased yet. And we'll get to that with the exclusions again. Exclusions remain the same for bottom of funnel. We have 30 day site visitors, purchasers, and lifetime email and SMS buyers. And then lastly, a quick note for bottom of funnel, we want to test the same ads as prospecting because those have built social proof and they've shown to work at top of funnel, which is ultimately the most difficult funnel layer to get working. So put those ads in bottom of funnel and people will recognize those in their feeds because they've seen them already and be likely to convert on them because of that but you should also test unique value props for bottom of funnel with a potential discount or offer for those that have added to cart or have gone to the site, but just haven't pulled the trigger yet. Moving on to the ad creative. This is a really important section. Don't skip over it. 
here are some best practices that you can use in your ad account to make sure that your ad creatives perform at their best capability. So first up, focus on the benefits and life transformation that your product is going to provide to the market and put that everywhere you can within the ad copy, ad creative, and landing page. Create congruency with your marketing material on all fronts on every section that a customer could possibly interact with your brand. And again, focus on that life transformation and net benefit over features of your product. Next, we wanna capture attention within the first two to five seconds of a video ad. That's also known as a hook or stopping the scroll. And it's really important we do this because if we don't, people aren't going to spend the time to figure out if the product is worth their time or investment or not. We have to capture the attention. That's just the way that social works, so do it put a hook in your video. We also need to understand that 80% plus of users on Facebook and Instagram don't view ads with sound turn on. So if you have a voiceover playing, that's awesome. And some people are gonna hear that, but the majority of people won't. So to compensate for that, I suggest that you have text overlays and captions to demonstrate exactly what's going on in the video and the value that your product can provide. Continuously look at your competitors' ads to see what they're doing and potentially take inspiration if you see an ad that's been running for a decent amount of time and it matches with your brand tone and versatility. Moving on to page two of our ad creative best practices, we want to aim for above a 2% unique link click-through rate. And this is actually a little bit difficult to achieve, especially when you don't have top tier performance marketing creative, but it's a goal that you should strive for Nonetheless, we want people to interact with our ad and click through to our website. Unique link click-through rate is a great way to measure that. We also want to wait a minimum of three times our gross margin before turning off an ad within an ad set because we deem that it's not working on Facebook. I really like to give creatives a long run time to see if they're really worth it, at least a couple hundred dollars in spend because you never know, maybe that first pocket or audience pool that Facebook shows our ad to just wasn't the best and they'll fix it and change it up and see maybe if it works in a different one. We need to give it time and budget to figure that out. And I'm a really big fan of letting creatives run in an account until we really know that it's not performing. Now, obvious exception, use your common sense. If your ads are getting a really, really, really poor in platform number or numbers throughout like a two to three day span after uploading, then sure turn them off if they're really that bad. But if they're performing at an average to mediocre level, give it some time and you might be surprised. You gotta make sure to upload your placement specific files for your ad creatives as well, which is nine by 16 or vertical for story placements and then one by one or square for Facebook feed and Instagram feed. If you have creatives that play to the specific placements, they're gonna look more natural and more professional to the user that's viewing the ad. And then lastly, if you have the capability to do this and you have an ad creative with multiple different variations to potentially test, be it color, copy, voice narration, opening hook, Try using a DCT test or dynamic creative test to see which variables are going to perform the best for you. <clears throat> Man, my voice is going right now. I really do apologize. Please show me some sympathy by dropping a like rating on this video down below, either on desktop or mobile. I don't know where it's gonna be located, but it helps with YouTube algorithm getting this video out to more people. That's essentially it. If you have questions or concerns, leave a comment down below. And if you wanna learn a little bit more about running Facebook ads in 2022 and 2023, Watch this video up here. Until next time, <clears throat> cheers.